Thank you for the privilege, God. And I submit myself to your spirit that you would move and say and do how you want to, realizing, God, I'm nothing without you. And what an honor and what a privilege. So thank you for the, your words, God. And for this, I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. I think um, I might need my reading glasses out, my bag there. So let's just be on the safe side here. Okay, so I won't have to do like that, all right? Um, but again, Pastor's doing an excellent job on You Better Believe It, and he's also doing an excellent job talking about our purpose. What are we here for in Wednesday night Bible study? So if you're not here or if you're not you streaming, you're missing a great opportunity to understand why you're here and what you have been called to. So first of all, I want to thank you. I want to, um, let's go to Luke 4 and 18. And I really just thought about, um, uh, let's just go back to the beginning. How about that? Okay, so 4 and 18, 19, All right? Okay. Um, Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. And that was, um, I was reading from the King James uh, Version, so um, just in case you read a different version. But I wanted to go back to the beginning because um, in 1992 when we started True Vine Ministries, that was our, that's our foundation. That's our base scripture. That's why we're here and why we do what we do. And so if anybody, um, and as a member of the church, you need to know that this is the very foundation of True Vine Ministries. Why we're here, what God has called us to do, to bring healing and deliverance to those that are um, bound, bruised, brokenhearted, uh, a recovery place for Christians that have been hurt. And so that's why we're here. And so over the years we have, um, when we, and I really, thought about it, we really didn't, you know, when we say liberating the world through the love of Christ, it is, when you think about it, uh, I think about really the, the old song they used to sing where it says, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. And that is the whole basis of why we're here, Luke 4 and 18, and why Jesus came to die for us, because it was the simple fact of love. And so when I began to think about when I gave my life to the Lord, all I could feel and sense was the love of Jesus Christ was overwhelming to me. Then I was like, wow, oh my goodness, God loves me. And I had no idea and to be able to experience that at that moment that, oh my goodness, I had been if you will, clueless to the fact that Jesus loved me and that he would sin, that he would die for me. And so it was just overwhelming. So when I begin to think about this, when we look at Luke 4 and 18, it's the whole basis is love. And so we are required to love because love lifted me, love delivered me, love set me free. Love kept me when I didn't want to be kept. Yeah. It was all about love. Yeah. And that he chose to love me in spite of myself. Yeah. And so I'm overwhelmed by the fact that he loves me. And that he keeps on loving me. Yeah. And so when we begin to think about True Bind Ministries and liberating the world through the love of Jesus Christ. And when we understand that it was... That, that love that Christ put in us, we have the opportunity um, and, all, and really we're compelled 
to use that same love and to reach out to others. So then that way they can experience and know that Jesus loves them. And then and on top of that, then to know that someone else loves them, that I can love you with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so that's why True Vine Ministries is here. It was love when we started the church in 1992. It was love when we started the uh, Day of Liberty. Uh, for those that, um, you know, has been here a while when we used to pack the food up, take it down to Murchison Road, go out in the middle of the field around the housing area and just set food up and put in tables of clothes and, and we would let the people know we were coming. The evangelists would be out there and, and w days and weeks before and giving out flyers and saying, we will be here in this spot on a certain day and we will feed you all Thanksgiving dinner. We will feed you all and we will clothe you that whatever you need, we'll pray for you and we will minister to you. Someone was always bringing a word. And so that was love in the very humble beginnings. It was love that sent so many to the autumn care nursing home when hardly nobody would go. It was love that compelled those to go week after week and to minister to those that were in the nursing home. That was all about love. And so everything that we have done has been based on the love that Christ has put in us. It was all about love opening up the pantry, the food pantry and the clothes closet two doors down. That was all about love and the people that serve there every Tuesdays and Thursday, they serve out of love. And that if I can meet your immediate need, then you will understand that Jesus loves you. Because here I am, I can distribute clothing and food to you and there's no strings attached. It's out of an unconditional love. And so the people provide that every Tuesday and Thursday as a representation of our ministry and to let them know that we love you unconditionally. And whether you say you have food at home or you don't have food, we choose to love you regardless. We choose to regardless whether you have a, a trunk full of food when we go out to help you, it's, that is not important. The importance is that we love you and that we're willing to show unconditional love in a world that has strings attached to everything. Everybody wants something from somebody every time for every single thing. And so here we say, you can go down there and get clothes and food with no strings attached. And then we can say you can, then we have those that go to the nursing home uh, on Thursdays and that way they begin to minister love. We have those that are, and you know back in the day we used to go downtown and do the Day of Liberty. Carry all the food down, set up downtown, I guess somewhere around Hay Street in there. We were just giving out food and clothing, walking, past the old CPNL building, trying to stop people, minister to people, seeing what their needs are. Hey, we got food down there. If you turn around and go back, we got food. And so we did all that out of love. We wasn't concerned about what kind of money it would cost us. We just did it because it was all about love. And that love lifted us. And so therefore, we're trying to lift you up out of that condition that you're in. And we want, we want to be able to say that you can experience liberty. No, your homelessness situation may not change. You may stay on the streets. Let's be real about it. Every, you may stay there. But the fact that of the matter is that you can experience liberty in your soul and that your soul can be set free. Regardless if you're carrying a suitcase down Morganton Road, we say that you can experience liberty. Whether or not you've had a bath 
or whether you had you don't know when the last time you had a meal we all we want you to know is that we'll meet your immediate needs but you can be set free in your mind and in your spirit and that's all about love and so I began to think about all the things that we have been doing and I and and as been stated before I begin you know say when and the Lord really dealing with me about the face of the church is changing and so and I really believe um, I really believe that you know we always talk about revival and I was sharing with others on this week and they said we always talk about revival but I really really believe that we're really on the brink of revival and then we're not just talking about in just in here but a city wide revival and if the if we and as a church and as a ministry and others continue to connect and continue to work together do what God has called us to do we will begin to see revival and so I really believe that the face of the church is changing and so when you know pastor had brought in the new year talking about the year reward and you know it's it's um, you know it's kind of funny because we're yay you know year reward and all that and we're looking for some stuff so don't you know don't knock me on that but then I said well have we really thought about it the year of reward what is God really saying to us yes reward is coming I, I do believe that but is there is their reward already here and I begin to think about it look God help don't let us miss you God don't let us miss you because if we really look at this we we may not understand that reward is already here and you may say well how so the Bible tells us that if you're faithful over a few things, I'll make you rulers over many. And you say, well, okay, where are you going with that? Well, we were faithful back in 1992, carrying the food downtown and on Murchison Road. And God has made us ruler. Therefore, he added to the ministry. So we went from downtown and Murchison Road hauling food to now we have a Liberty Place, a house set up for food and clothing. Is this not reward? If you're faithful over a few things. And then God in all of his goodness and all of his mercy and love said, well, you know what? The people, yes, it might have been a select few and maybe just a handful, but because they've been faithful in giving out food and clothing and all that and meeting the needs of those coming in just for that hour or two, then you know what? I'm going to reward you. Here come white flag. Because if you're faithful over, why would I give you something bigger? Why would I give you more responsibility if you hadn't been faithful over what you already had? So could this not be reward? And we're looking at it a little bit differently. So help us, Holy Ghost. Because we're looking at this the wrong way. Because this is reward. That God would say, here's something and we're going to just throw it in your lap. Just throw it in your lap. Where did this come from? We didn't even have time to prepare. And I'm, you know, and I'm just so, you know, amazed by God because, you know, that just how God set up everything. And he didn't have time for us to say, wait a minute. We got some things to do. We got to get some things in order. No, I'm going to reward you. And, and see, we're looking for reward. God, just do that spontaneous reward. God, drop, just do it like this. Well, here he is. He just dropped white flag in front of us. And so it is a reward because if you've been faithful over a few things, then I'm going to add something to you. And so here's the opportunity to feed people and to clothe people, not two days a week, 
Some days it's been five days a week. Four days a week. Three days a week. And so here we are. We have the responsibility. And so is this not a reward? It's a reward. But some of us missed it. It's a reward. And so we don't, and so we have to understand that now that we're, you know, you're talking about, uh, again, white flag, and it's not, it, because it's been a progression, and that's what we have to see. God has elevated us. He has promoted us. And then the city want to think they doing something and saying something about us when we've been doing it all along. And so they want to, you know, come and see us. The mayor want to come and see us. And I mean, again, I'm not knocking that. But we've been doing it all along. And nobody saw us when we had food in the back of the cars carrying them to and from. So God has rewarded us. And so therefore, we, have, we are getting exposure now. And so we've been doing the work. Thank you, Jesus. Now exposure has come. And so when exposure come, it puts a spotlight on, at this moment, white flag. Now, they didn't ask us about Day of Liberty. Now, I mean, yeah, we've, there have been some conversations that let them know, yeah, we've been doing this all along. But their reason in coming was white flag to grant us exposure. And so when you get exposure, you have to understand that they're highlighting white flag. They're highlighting True Vine Ministries. And so, therefore, we have to be careful as people, as humans, that we don't, don't act funny now because they're only, they only exposing what they see at this moment. They wasn't here in 1992 in, in the year 2000. You know, we were just a number, just another church. So nobody saw that. And so we have to be careful as a people that we don't get in our flesh because what exposure does it exposes what we're doing but it exposes what's going on internally and so when you want to see when a, a, a church or an organization or a business what's really going on you have to go you have to look internal so you think about the show that they do on TV, Undercover Boss. The boss is sitting in his office as a CEO, making all the money, writing checks, expanding the business, and then all of a sudden, he realized he gotta go undercover to be able to expose what's going on eternally. And so a lot of times when we see that, when we see that show, they are amazed at what's going on internally. That, oh my goodness, things have got to change. What, they're not doing it like they're supposed to be doing it. This is the way we didn't, we didn't teach them like this. So we have to be very careful because exposure, again, will highlight what we're doing, but it also showed the flaws. It'll show the murmuring and the complaining. It'll show that. And so we have to be very, very careful. And the Bible tells us that you do all things without murmuring and complaining in Philippians 2 and 14. That if I'm going to do the work, then I must shut my mouth. Check my attitude and do it in the love of Jesus Christ. Because I said that love lifted me and that what I'm doing is an unconditional love. And so therefore we have to be careful of what could be going on eternally. 
And the Bible says with this same scripture in uh, Philippians 2 and 14 in the Message Bible. It says, do everything readily and cheerfully. Amen. No bickering. Yes. No second guessing allowed. That's right. That's right. That's it. And so we have to continue that what we're doing, we have to continue to be able to do it in the love of Jesus Christ. That we have to stay focused and on the mission out of Luke 4 and 18. That we are to heal the brokenhearted and to set at liberty them that are in captivity. And so we can't forget that. So we have to, let's make sure we're, whatever we're doing, we do it all in the love of Jesus Christ. And do you not know back in 1992, yeah, there was only a handful of people out at the Day of Liberty. Do you not know there's only hand people or one or two in autumn care nursing home? But the job got done. And most importantly, God saw that. Because we wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be an elevation if there was no sacrifice. And I really believe also that when we look at this in the bigger picture, you know, we always talking about prosperity. Do you not know that prosperity, when we, we, you know, it's not always just about money, but do you not know that prosperity comes through sacrifice? Yes. And I'm, I'm just excited to see what God will do on behalf of his people that have sacrificed. Yes. Where you, all of a sudden you might have saw them here, but all of a sudden they moved over here. Or they might have felt like they were in the back of the line, but they in the front of the line now. Because what? Sacrifice. Yes. Prosperity comes through sacrifice. Yes. Of your time and of your energy. Yes. And so then I have no reason to be upset with my brother or my sister. Because when I see them prospering, yes. I got to understand their sacrifice. And really, when you can look at my sacrifice, you can shut your mouth. You have nothing to say because I sacrificed. You have nothing to say to the person that decided I'll take the bus for two years and I'll pinch off my money until I can get a car. You have nothing to say. Because of sacrifice. You have nothing to say to the person that I'll stay with my mama, me and my three kids, until I can get a house of my own. You have nothing to say because I've sacrificed. So prosperity comes through sacrifice. So how do you want to be blessed? And then, my, you know, my mom always talked about the mess of T.D. Jakes that said, can you stand to be blessed? And True Vine Ministry is in a place where can we stand to be blessed because exposure is coming. And I thank God for uh, the man of God, Javon, and, you know, talking to him. And I told, you know, I told them, I said, you know what? We've been trying to figure out how this, the money and all this stuff going to come from the new sanctuary. It's going to come. Because we have received exposure that people will bless us because they see what we've done and doing with white flag that they want to now sow into what we're doing. And that's how we will begin to build and do what we need to do on this campus. So prosperity comes through sacrifice. So the year of reward has come in one area that I'm talking about, white flag. So thank you, Jesus. And so a change of direction, the face of the church is changing. A new look, new life, a community church. Because when you think about, a, when you say a face, 
you think about when you say to um, you all of a sudden when I think about some of the definitions of face is you get a uh, all of a sudden you get a boldness you think about face to preserve face is to have a good reputation dignity prestige and so all of a sudden we're in a different direction so we were going one way and all of a sudden God said nope go this way and so we're going in a different direction and we're trying to create a community church by developing friendships with different people or groups that's all about a community so here we have because in the time past we had the opportunity to minister to the people Thanksgiving we had an opportunity to minister to people Fourth of July oh Christmas going to nursing home and so what white flag has given us is consistency because now we're able to see people on a day-to-day -day basis and it gives us the opportunity and I said God don't let us miss it because we have the opportunity to impact their lives so think about it when you did it for Thanksgiving that's all you did you saw them. okay God bless you see you next Thanksgiving this time we have an opportunity they know names and faces they tell me where you where have you been I'm like uh well I I, can, I came the other day you know so, so they know names and faces and so it gives us an opportunity to provide consistency in their lives and to impact their lives. One watered, one planted, one watered. God's going to give the increase. Plant, water, God give the increase. And therefore, it gives us an opportunity as sharing the love of Jesus Christ to impact their lives and to change their lives through the message of Jesus Christ. Are we doing that with the uh, big Bible? No. We're doing that through showing love. We do that when we put about three heppings on the plate. We love you. We do that by hugging. We do that by talking to you. And then let's have a conversation that you're human and I'm human. And there are some things we have in common. We just hadn't figured it out. And that we're all looking for the same thing. We're looking to be loved unconditionally. Because if the truth be told, who's been homeless before? But you ain't told nobody. If the truth be told, you had to sleep in your car. If the truth be told, you had an eviction notice on your house or your apartment. But nobody wants to talk about that. So thank God for the grace of God and the mercy of God because it could have been me. And so to God be the glory for the things that he has done. So we have a lot of things in common. We just got to find them out. And so it gives us the opportunity to minister life. And we want to make sure that we take full advantage of changing their lives and you know I was having a conversation with Tony on this week and it's something that um, you know she had said because when I you know and I really had you know God was dealing about the face of the church is changing but you know she was pointing out to me and I said you know what I never thought about it hmm. the actual face of the church is changing so not just things are changing, but the actual faces are changing. That when you can have people that not sure where they're going to sleep at at night and join the ministry, but, willing to, but they're willing to come. So the face is changing. 
that you have so many people of various demographics right here in the house. So the actual face is changing. And so we have to be able to look at this very, very closely and say, well, God, that however you want to move, whatever you want to do in this hour, we're willing to do this. And again, Pastor is talking about on Wednesday night, talking about our purpose. And I thought about it because, you know, again, I was having a conversation with Tony. And, um, and then later on, I was just kind of thinking about some things. And I said, hmm, what if, let's, let's use the pantry, for example. What if we have awesome people that serve over there? But what if with our new members and our new addition to the family, what if their purpose is to run the pantry? What if their purpose is to run white flag next winter? The face of the church is changing. Because they'll know like better than any of us. They know how to talk the lingo better than any of us. They know people that we will never know or never come in contact with. So the face of the church is changing. So just what if that's their purpose? And our main objective, objective is to help them get to their purpose. Then they can get and do what God has called them to do. So we can't get stuck on the fact that, yeah, we, we may be in place, but we're only meeting the need. Like we always say in church, that if there's something that needs to be done, we meet the immediate need. I don't care if you're anointed for it. I don't know if, care if you don't know how to do it. You meet the need. We're meeting the need. But what if God has somebody in our new family to run this? that understands this, that knows the system from downtown to up here, what if? And so we have to be able to impact lives because we don't know. So, the face of the church is changing. And so we gotta allow God to change the face. Allow God to do what he needs to do. And because of that, I believe we'll see revival. I believe that the, the ministry as a whole will do such a change. And I do. Yeah, I, I understand that, you know, um, and I, I know Pastor got on his little soapbox last week, and I was like, oh, man, I told somebody I should have got to him before he got up. <laughs> but... And he was talking about the 10%, but it, yeah, it's not for everybody. Okay. Yeah, everybody can, everybody can do something, but everybody may not have their hands right in it. Okay? So everybody can donate money. Everybody can donate time in some way or another. Um, you know, everybody can go and keep somebody company. Okay, we can do that. But everybody may can't stay from 12 midnight to 2 in the morning. Okay, you got babies at home. You better stay home, you know. So we can understand that, okay. That's a no-brainer. We can understand that. So we have to realize that God has put people in place. And so all we want to do as a ministry is be able to take some of the load off that where we can help, we can. Okay, take some of the load off the pantry people where we can help. We can help. When Joshua Army feeds on Wednesdays, thank God for them, we can help where we can help, just serving food. Okay, on fourth Wednesdays, we can, you know, Day of Liberty, when that comes around in October time frame, we can help. So there's always avenues for us to help, and we have to take advantage of that. And, and as I said, Pastor's doing an awesome study in, on Wednesday nights, and on this week, he'll be talking about unity in the body. And so I want to look at um, a few of the things that um, he'll be talking about, okay? So let's go to Ephesians. 
fourth, the fourth chapter. Okay. All right. Um, okay. I'll read from the uh, King James Version. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as you're called in one hope of your calling. Okay. All right. Let's see there. Okay. So we have been called to humility, gentleness. I'm breaking it down a little bit. Patience, showing tolerance and for one another in love. But the whole aspect of that is to, uh, to be able to preserve the unity of the spirit. We are to live at peace with all men. Okay, and whatever is possible within us, within our being, we are to live at peace and be at peace with our, with our brothers and sisters. So we have to, if you will, let's just say do what's necessary to keep peace. And so we have to um, focus on what we have in common, not our differences. We have to choose to encourage rather than criticize. And we have to really be willing to support each other, okay? To, uh, to love each other, to be there for one another. And, and you know, the, like I said, the beautiful thing is God is um, he's changing the face of it. He's expanding the family. And so, and as Pastor talked about on uh, Wednesday night, you know, you didn't get to choose who was in your family, your natural family. I, I don't think I would want to be the, uh, the middle child. I really wouldn't have wanted to be the middle child. I mean, if I had a choice about the matter. But you didn't, you didn't get to choose your natural family. And so God is in such his, his love and his awesomeness. He's choosing to expand the family. And we get an opportunity to see another part of our families like long distance cousins that we never knew we had. And so we have an opportunity to get to know each other, to, to, to introduce ourselves to a different part of the family. And so what an awesome responsibility. And that we, we, we always say family's important. Well, family's important. And when we all, you know, when it all boils down to, when regardless of how crazy your natural family is, or how you don't want to go to the family reunions and all that kind of stuff, you know what? You can still say, at least 99%, that you still love your family. Okay, you might not, you may not see them but once a year, but you still love them, you know? So our goal is to continue to liberate people through the love of Jesus Christ. And by doing that, God is going to expand our family. And it's going to be so beautiful, you know, um, just to see how God is going to do that. And so, again, like I said, we have to just be mindful of the internal workings of the enemy that may try to come in to divide to, um, you know, uh, cause confrontation or, um, you know, just be divisive and be messy and gossipy and all that kind of stuff. Be careful because that's the enemy, internal workings. That's, inter that's, that's the enemy working. So God has rewarded us, but we don't want to disappoint God. And we don't want to, we, when we want to be able to see what God is doing, Okay, and it may be just little bits at a time, but we want to see what God is doing. But we need to allow God to work because this is this is bigger than we thought. It's much bigger. We don't we, we don't know what we're doing really. Okay, <laughs> let's tell the truth. I mean, it's just us, you know. We don't know, but um, but you know what? God has a plan, and so we need to watch God. 
But this is, look at this differently. This is a reward. People are coming to the church just because they heard about white flag. Exposure is great. But, the, but you got to know how to act and behave with exposure. Don't get all, you ain't all that, okay? All right, I know the spotlight's on you too, but don't, you're not all that, okay? True mind is not all that, okay? Let me bust your bubble right now, okay? So be careful, exposure is good. But we want to allow God to do what he's going to do, and he has rewarded us. I'm asking if you would stand all over the building. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We bless and honor your name, Jesus. And we give you praise and we give you glory. And you know, God, we, yeah, we, we apologize, God. Because we didn't see it like that. We didn't see it as a reward. But that you, you honored your word and you rewarded us. And to know that we're smack dab in the middle of your wheel, your word, has been manifested if you're faithful over a few things <laughs> you know God we always talk about there shall be a, re a performance well there's been a performance so God forgive us for looking at it the wrong way wow that you would take us little old us and give us such a task but you knew we could do it God and so for this we thank you and we praise you and so, Father, we pray, God, that we would, we would look at what's going on eternal. God, fix our hearts. God, fix our hearts. If there, if, God, fix our hearts. Fix our minds. In the name of Jesus. God, even when there's fatigue in our bodies, some, God, it, it can wear, wear on us. God, fix our minds and our hearts, oh God. And so, God, we thank you, God, for the joy to serve you the joy to be able to serve people and so we honor you and we praise you God thank you Lord Jesus thank you for the reward God I don't even know if we said it God I don't even know if we said it God thank you for the reward <laughs> hallelujah thank you for the reward God we're so busy figuring out our time and what time we need to be there and what we need to do and but God thank you for the reward and so we honor you for what you've done and we give you praise for the exposure God we thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus and God thank you God we bless you and honor you and we praise you Thank you for your love, God. And thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to liberate someone else by showing your love. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a hand praise?